late okay so we are going to begin the class now so yesterday we were discussing about the infancy and childhood period of the growth and developmental stage and today we are going to discuss the block 2 that is adolescence the period of adolescence and we have got four units in this block in the unit one uh, we will discuss on the physical cognitive and social development of adolescence and in unit two that's on the emotional and behavioral development then unit three is on the challenges during adolescence and unit four is on the role and functions of the teachers, parents, and significant others, okay, to develop their milestones in this particular period. So I'm going to share my screen now. So here, the second block is majorly focusing on the period of adolescence. So we know that what <coughs> this period, the specialities of this period, and the adolescence, it marks as an important time in the process of human development. Okay, the, it's a passage between the childhood and the adult, adulthood. So it is considered as the time of uh, tremendous opportunity and promises when adolescents begin to explore their growth, individuality and independence and begin to think critically about themselves and the world around them. So in this stage, uh, they are becoming more independent. Their perception about the world, about others uh, get widened and they begin to adjust and adapt to the marked biological, uh, psychological and social changes and challenges that are the byproducts of this adolescence. So here, most young people are able to navigate the adolescent years successfully with the support of caring families and the communities. But some, they may have some obstacles and they may fall behind due to various factors uh, like the poor family support, uh, misleading social surroundings, drugs, uh, some sort of addictions, then substance abuse, etc. So, the society has to ensure a supportive environment for the betterment of the adolescent people. So the society should provide opportunities for youth to build strong and meaningful connections with their families, their school and their communities. And to meet the needs of the younger people, it's important to ensure that the helping professionals have the fundamental knowledge and understanding of the variations, the manifest manifestations that happen during this development period that includes the physical, the cognitive, the social and emotional development, along with the challenges that they're facing in the fast moving consumerist society. So that's the introduction about the adolescence and now we move on to the uh, definition so who defines adolescence as the progression from the appearance of secondary sex characteristics that is puberty to sexual and reproductive maturity so the development of mental processes and adult identity and the transitions from total socio-economic dependence to relative independence so according to who world health organization uh, the adolescent health care the age is between sorry the age is between 10 to 19 years and it divides adolescents into three psychosocial developmental phases so the who has divided uh, the adolescent period into three uh, groups the first one is early adolescence that is from 10 to 13 years and the second is uh, second group is middle adolescence uh, it starts 
from 14 and ends in the 16 years of their life. Then the third one, that is the late adolescent period, that is from 17 to 19 years of life. So the adolescence characterized by rapid physical, social, and mental and emotional change. All these in the, all these periods, we can witness it. And it is also a time of the opportunity and risk for them. And uh, they will be having a particular term to be addressed that is a storm and stress period. It's a time of this storm and stress. And the present society, the present day society, with its dramatic changes in the information technology, family structure, over dependence on materialistic nature, etc., creates this particular context that is a storm and stress period for the adolescents. So the family life in this period that can also profoundly affect the years of adolescents. So many households have both parents are working, resulting in the less interaction and involvement between the parents and the adolescent children. So many adolescents have their own job uh, to save up for the college or buy clothes or to meet their own material possessions. So as a result, Many of these adolescents sleep less. They often uh, resulting in poor academic skills and generally being more tired and un unfocused. So due to the various uh, busy schedule that they are forming to meet their own experience, expenses, uh, they will become restless and they lack the uh, sleep and they are having a lot of problems around them. So the sexual revolution has also had an effect on teens. Teens are sexually active at a younger age uh, before being emotionally ready for an intimate relationship. So as a result, there have been increases in a uh, uh, this period, we can see they're having an excessive sexual interest. Uh, and as a result, uh, many STDs or HIV cases have been reported among the adolescent group. Uh, overall, we can tell that the adolescents have to deal with issues, both physically, psychologically, and a lot of circumstances uh, to get uh, circumstances, circumstantial influences uh, are there to... Uh, create a lot of uh, both positive and negative uh, impacts among them. So we are going to discuss now the characteristics of adolescents. What are the specialities of adolescents? So as we know that adolescent is a very important period. It's a very important period in the lifespan. So adolescents, they are certain characteristics that should distinguish from periods that precedes uh, it and the periods that will follow it. So it's an important period. It's a period where the immediate and the long term effects are important. So they have got immediate as well as the long term effects are there. This period is also important for their psychological and physical effects. So they are, I've already told that they are having, they're widening their thoughts, their perception, they are thinking a lot, they are having a sense of independence, uh, they choose their own selection of people, their own choices. So as a result, they are becoming uh, uh, very noticed and they are becoming very stressful. Okay, so in the second characteristics, we can call that adolescence is a transitional period. So it's a transitional period from the child life to the adult life. So in this period, people are becoming more serious about their life. So they are undergoing a lot of changes, both physically, uh, mentally, and socially. So the physical change that take place during the early years of adolescence affects the individual's behavioral level and lead to re-evaluations and a shifting adjustment of values. So in this time period, they will start to question. So they will be having a lot of things to get clarified. So they will address many issues from their own perceptions. Sometimes they will be supporting the values existing in the society. Sometimes as per their own uh, convictions, they will try to deviate from the values. 
and uh, there is a chance of lot of uh, uh, this uh, comfort uh, may be arising in the uh, their lives due to these uh, characteristics so it's a transitional period uh, they are becoming very much adjusted and not adjusted as well so this transition that creates a lot of confusions to them whether to uh, where to stick on or where to no, uh, accept or not accept the things that they see around the world so the third characteristic of adolescent period is its period of change it's a period of change all the developmental stages have got lot of changes but here particularly during adolescence when the physical changes are rapid changes in the attitudes that is happening and behavior also undergo rapid changes the important changes that occur the adolescents during this period are the heightened emotionality they become sexually mature their social expectations are becoming high changes in interests behaviors and values and their ambivalence about these changes then move on to the next one that is it's a problem age adolescence is a problem age we know that in this period children or the adolescent group of people are having they are uh, facing lot of problem they are creating lot of uh, problem so it's a difficult period for both the girls and boys so throughout the childhood their problems were met and solved by their parents and teachers and so many adolescents are in experienced in solving the problems the adolescents wants to feel that they are independent they should uh, not want anyone to uh, advise them they don't like to get advised they don't like to get motivated but in most of the people are having their own perception their own uh, state of independence okay so here they want to feel that they are independent they demand the right of coping with their problems they tell that okay i know what to do so that's a uh, statement uh, usually told by almost all the adolescent people i know what to do okay so they are showing that independence and confidence uh, their confidence on this realm but we know that what will happen okay they are having a lot of problems still okay so the next characteristic is it's a period of search for identity so here they want to prove themselves what he or she is what the capabilities or what the caliber they are acquire they acquire to fulfill a particular task which is assigned to them so here they are in a search of identity so they focusing on the conformity to the groups they belong is important in the childhood in the adolescence beside their conformity to the group they gradually begin to crave identity and are no longer satisfied to be like their peers so every uh, time they want to prove themselves and they try to establish their individuality uh, through uh, status their symbols like uh, cars clothes and other readily observable material possessions so in this period uh, they want to get different from the other one so for that they are opting their own dress code they will make some changes in that they particularly fond of wearing the dress of a particular brand they have got their own style of speaking and behaving with the other one so the using of products like uh, uh, the sprays or even the perfumes so each and everything has got uh, uh, a uniqueness in this particular age used by the adolescents okay then it's a time of unrealism that is the next characteristic it's a time adolescents is a time of unrealism so they have the tendency to look at life through uh, rose tinted glasses so they are seeing the life in their own view and they see themselves and others as they would like them to rather than as they are so they see the things as per their own comfort not uh, from the point of the reality so with the increased social and personal experiences and the ability to think rationally 
older adolescents see themselves and their families and friends and life in a more realistic way so once they are becoming uh, serious about their life they will start to see the things uh, as per the uh, betterment of the entire society that includes their family their friends etc so the next characteristic is it's a threshold of adulthood the adolescence that is a threshold of adulthood so here adolescents tries to create an impression that they are near adults and they discover that dressing and acting as adults is not always enough so they start to associate them with the behaviors of adults like smoking drinking drugs etc okay so in the teenagers they are fond of imitating others they want to prove that okay they are though they are in the uh, uh, period of uh, teenage or even adolescence they want to uh, show off themselves uh, by imitating the adult people what they do like smoking then drinking drugs etc okay so these are the characteristics that make different this particular age group now we can discuss the developmental task of adolescents developmental task so uh, adolescents has to an adolescent he has to achieve certain attitudes certain habits and their own skills if or she if he or she has to perform an effective uh, task as an adult in the society so when they are assigned when they get deployed with something to do they have to possess their own attitude habits and skills to do certain task to complete certain task in the society so these are called the developmental task okay so the developmental task are the task which aries at or about a certain period in the life of an individual and the successful achievement may lead to happiness and success in the later task while failure leads to unhappiness in the individual disapproval in the society and difficulty with the later task and the development of task of adolescents are as follows they have got their own roles to play they have got their own uh uh things to do that means task to be completed so the life task and uh, they have to practice and they have to perform in this particular age group so there will be uh accepting one's physique or body as it is they have to achieve uh them and more mature relationship with age mates they have to achieve the social roles that is becoming responsible members of society they have to achieve the values they have to prepare the economic career they have to prepare the for marriage and family life so these are the developmental task usually they have to uh, uh, complete or attain during this period okay so physical development so here physical development describes the changes that takes place in the physiological nature or the makeup of an individual okay so the way that he presents his physique to the other one the changes that happens during that uh, period so the physical development that is measured by such factors as height weight body build strength endurance flexibility rate of physical maturation motor coordination physical health and body composition etc okay all these things are the changes that is very much seen uh, very much explicitly seen in this particular period okay sir uh, uh, it has been seen that uh, during teenager between yeah. 17 to 18 uh, most of the teenagers develop anxiety issues like don't they don't pick up the call they don't answer the phone calls so how to deal with these type of uh, issues yeah so that's uh, because of their choice so this particular age is a uh, particular men for them to make their own choices so they prefer to take attend the calls as per their own preferences so you know the transition that happens from childhood to adolescence so in that period they are having their own way of behaving their own uh, people who are very much fond of them to speak but they become silent with the parents or even with the teachers or 
they are having a tendency to share their experiences to share care everything to the friends so also they're having uh, these peer relations and the op uh, and attraction to the opposite sex so they will be more comfortable with them so unless and until they feel that the person who calls or rings are much fond of them then only they will answer the call uh, that's purely lies on their interest okay so uh yeah the puberty that's a major change that happens in the uh physical development of an adolescent so puberty is nothing but it's refer it is the physiological changes that the adolescent undergoes in order to reach sexual maturity so we have to understand the onset of puberty in adolescents so it is best characterized as the gradual onset of mature reproductive hormonal activity that is triggered by the central nervous system that is mainly the hypothalamus and pituitary gland so that is the scientific explanation of this puberty then most people look at puberty in three distinct stages that railed the prepubescent pubescent and post pubescent so the prepubescent stage that includes the first evidence of sexual maturation so they are having the primary sexual characteristics in that period so and they terminates uh, at the first appearance of pubic hair then during this stage the reproduction is virtually possible during the pubescent stage the growth spurt begins to accelerate males experience their first emission of semen usually in the form of wet dreams and uh, menarche occurs in the females the post pubescent stage is characterized by the de uh, deceleration of growth spurt that completion of both primary and sexual characteristics and fertility is possible so it's an amazing change that is uh, actually called as a gift of god to prove or to complete uh, the human being as a person because uh, he or she when the person is getting fulfilled it means the capability to reproduce so this age in particularly this period they are attaining that maturation for the reproductive life okay then the sexual development of the adolescents uh that in boys and girls we have to understand it separately so the adolescent they grow the first centers of the extremities so the legs and hams during the early stages of adolescence the changes also occur in the facial configurations of both sexes okay then the lower portion of the head begins to grow uh, because the chin lengthens and the nose grows uh, width and or length and additional changes in proportion of the face is uh, accredited to changes to tissue distribution all these are some scientific explanation the biological explanation is to for the better understanding of the changes that happen during the sexual development of adolescents so changes also uh, occur on the surface or body in both sexes the most observable changes in the growth on body hair uh, both pubic and uh, axillary that's the ampit and the development of pubic hair is the first sign of a child entering the a uh, pre pubescent stage and entering to the pubescent stage so this process begins about the same time as the growth spurt begins so we have experienced and we people know what all things what all changes that happens and uh, uh, in through the table so if you look at the table that is shared now uh, from that we can identify what are the changes that happens among boys and girls separately uh, so these are the fundamental changes that should be there and that has to be uh, understood very clearly then only we can uh, understand the problem that happens among the sexual development or with regard to the sexual development and we have to deal the same okay so in the boys is a growth spurt occurs and girls growth spurt occurs uh, for the boys muscles develop for the girls the breast getting developed then the skin becomes oily for boys for as the same as 
the boys the girls skin also becomes oily then shoulders broaden their hip widen then voice cracks for boys and for girls the voice becomes shrill and the underarm and chest hair appears for boys underarm hair appears for girls so all these things the facial hair appears for boys then external genitals enlargement for girls then if you read if you go through that we can easily understand the things through the uh, table then another important uh, change that happened in this period is the menstruation for girls so the menstrual cycle that is controlled by the hypothalamus which acts as a menstrual clock so the clock operates through the pituitary gland located at the base of the brain the pituitary gland uh, cyclically secretes two hormone which directly stimulate the ovary these hormones are folly follicle stimulating and uh, luteinizing hormones some medical terms that may not be familiar to us okay so the menstruation that occurs approximately every 3 to 4 weeks so we know that then if the ovum is not fertilized most of the lining of the uterus mixed with blood is expelled through the cervix into the vagina the blood blood discharge is referred to as menstruation that's menses or a menstrual period so the entire cycle repeats itself with uh, regularity throughout the reproductive life of the female so that shows the reproductive life of the female the regularity the continuity of that particular period then however its onset after puberty menstruation may be irregular for up to a year or two then this thus we can tell that the period of uh, understanding all these informations we can tell that the period of adolescence not only brings about physical changes but psychological changes that make the child uh, a qualitatively different person when he compared to the other one these changes affect the personality and adjustment in the later life the sexual development is over now we move on to the cognitive development any doubts no sir so now we move on to the next developmental changes that happens in this adolescent that is cognitive development okay so here we know that adolescence they marks the beginning development of more complex thinking process the so cognitive is nothing but it is the ability to think the uh, to form the logical uh, assertions or the logical operations that could be very much formal that including the abstract thinking thinking about the possibilities so they are widening their thoughts in the uh, through abstract thinking the ability to reason from non principles okay form on new ideas or questions from the existing facts or the principles the ability to consider many points of view according to varying criteria uh, or in other words we can tell that it's a compare or debate ideas or opinions and the ability to think about the process of thinking so in this particular age period they are making their own way of thinking so they have got they are trying to uh, create complex thinking that means they have to form the logical operations and they are uh, in a position for widening their thoughts through abstract thinking so they want to know what are the possibilities around them to when it is regard to a particular issue or a particular thing to be done and the ability to reason from on principles so they are justifying they are re-examining reassessing the existing principles or the values and they start to question as per their own convictions as per their own understanding of the principles that's existing okay so the ability to consider many points of view okay they compare or even they debate ideas opinions and they thus they are in the process of they are making the ability to think about the process of thinking so adolescents are able to analyze situations logically in terms of cause and effect they will try to do that it's a speciality of the adolescent during this period they want to find what is the cause and what could be the uh, effect when uh, he deals with a problem then they are in a position to entertain the hypothetical situations uh, they use symbols such as metaphors 
they imaginatively uh, produce a lot of things uh, to make others to understand they have this higher level thinking allows them to think about the future and evaluate alternatives and set personal goals so here these things things are very crucial because they are setting if they are very much uh, focused on their development cognitive development definitely they will start to set their own goals their own uh, great goals and they're working for it they're trying plan how to achieve how to accomplish their goal etc then the com cognitive competence that includes a lot of things as the ability to reason effectively problem solving uh, then they start to think abstractly and they uh, reflect about what they are thinking and the plan for the future so they are very much oriented and they are become organized during this period and if they are having a good cognitive capacities and uh, significant differences also have been identified in the cognitive development of adolescent boys and girls that appears the adolescent boys and girls do differ in their confidence level in certain cognitive abilities and skills and adolescent girls tend to feel more confident about their reading and social skills than boys they spend much more time for reading and for other social skills than boys and adolescent boys they tend to feel more confident about their athletic uh, and manual uh, skills math skills etc so if we check the uh, methodology that the adolescent group of uh, people use in their academic uh, studies and all you can easily uh, understand the differences you know the boys they won't sit and study for a long time they are good at mathematics most of them are good at math mathematics as well and if you think about the girls if you observe them they will sit and study for a long time they are reading they're writing they spend much more time it doesn't mean that they are not brilliant as the boys but their uh, nature their habits are like that when this in this period okay Let's see the development of adolescence in the different stages of adolescence, namely the early adolescence, middle adolescence, and the later adolescence. Okay. So we can uh, understand the cognitive development in uh, early adolescence. Uh, so they are very much focused on the personal decision making in school and home environment and uh, they also focuses or start to demonstrate the use of formal logical operations in their schoolwork they begin to question authority and society standard we know that okay the in this age group the children are very much fond of asking a lot of questions they will uh, make dices of disputes or even chaos will be there and they are fond of controversy uh, that means they want to create a lot of controversies. So that's also, uh, if the people are involved in such kind of activities, definitely we can tell they're growing. Okay, so that's a positive sign with them if it's in the positive way. Okay, otherwise it won't be. So they will become some uh, antisocial uh, beings. Okay, so they also begin to form and verbalize his or her own thoughts and views on a variety of topics which are more related to his or her own life like which sports are uh, better to play so they're selective in uh, what other things they do uh, then they're selective with the people the personal appearances are desirable or attractive etc so in the middle adolescence so that also Middle adolescence is characterized by growth in emotional autonomy and increasing uh, the detachment from the family. So they want to, they create a sense of detachment uh, in this age uh, group. And the bulk of physical growth and the development is completed during this stage. However, the body image concerns that may continue to be a source of uh, a trepidation especially among the males who are late to mature and female who have experienced great changes in the body composition and size so that is related to the physical uh, nature that they uphold then the conflicts of a personal uh, choice including food choices becoming 
increasingly common during this stage of adolescence the peer groups become more important than family and their influences with regard to making the food choices uh, into a great extent then coinciding with the uh, increased importance of peer acceptance the initiation of health compromising behavior such as smoking alcohol consumption using street drugs and engaging in sexual activities often occurs during middle adolescence so it's a dangerous period so they they have the interest or they want to experience something unusual uh, their urge of you getting realized with the unusual activities so they will be in a trouble in the middle adolescent group so the teens may consider themselves in invisible in Invincible and often still display impulsive behaviors. Abstract reasoning skills begin to emerge among most teens during the middle adolescence. So, however, these skills may not be highly developed. Adolescents uh, will often reg regress to concrete thinking skills when faced with overwhelming emotions or stressful situations. So, what are the things? Uh, or what are the changes that are uh, explicitly happening in this age are they often question more extensively for each and everything they will start to question so they want to know from there on uh, they need an answer that should satisfy their uh, perception so they, for that they are keep on asking a lot of questions then frequently analyzes more extensively they think about and begin to form their own code of ethics apart from the social or moral ethics what do i think is right so about a particular issue or a thing so what i am thinking about that's right now the other one is thinking uh, i am not letting him to impose what his convictions on that particular thing over me so the things about and begins to systematically consider possible future goals that is what do i want so here i don't want anyone to uh, impose or forcefully making to set my goals but here i know what to do for me i know what i want so that should be the stage or the confidentiality that they have made in this uh, then they think about the begins uh, think and it begins to make his or her own plans they begin to think long term their systematic thinking begin to influence their relationship with others so they are in a process, uh, process of systematic thinking as per according to that they are uh, maintaining and creating their relationship so in the late adolescent period so it is a stage of adolescence that is characterized by the development of a strong personal identity so the late adolescents they are becoming a strong personal they are possessing a strong personal identity so their biological growth and development uh, has concluded among most teens and the body image issues are less common so in the previous stage that is in the middle uh, middle and the initial one uh, we can see that they are becoming more body conscious so here in the late adolescence that conscious is less common and the body image issues are less common and the older adolescents they are able to manage increasingly sophisticated uh, social situations they are able to suppress impulsive behaviors and are less affected by uh, peer pressure okay so they are becoming more serious and they are having their own way of action so the economic and emotional dependence upon family is markedly decreased and conflict of a personal issue such as food choices they also decrease the relationship uh, and the choices that they uphold during the previous uh, stages that also getting decreased the relationships with the single individual become more influential than those with a group of peers as a stronger sense of personal identity emerges so uh, according to his personality he wants to select a particular person as his companion or his friend or his partner okay then um, in the previous groups they are fond of behaving and mingling with the group but here in this late adolescence they are becoming person centered so they just look for the people who are very much uh, closely related to their own interests or their own choices okay then the focuses on this particular late adolescent period are the they're having more global concepts such as justice history 
politics and patriotism so they are seriously thinking about they will have the tendency to focus on the serious issues like the justice what justice is then they are fighting for the justice for if some injustice is happening before them they will start to ask questions then they are very much uh, eager to know the history and to search in the history to understand the things that as it is in the current phenomenon then the uh, police politics and policies and even the patriotism they are having a strong convictions about the patriotism so they often develop idealistic views on specific topics or concerns so according to their interest their own knowledge their own uh, field of interest they are selecting they are uh, uh, choosing their own topics for their discussions and their own concerns so they may debate and they develop intolerance of opposing views so sometimes they will question they will start to debate they will start to ask uh, opposition they will start to op uh, create oppositions to the uh, statement that is told by others and they are having toler intolerance will be there of opposing views then they begin to focus uh, thinking on making career decisions okay their focus is much on the career decisions so they are in their own stage and they are in their own uh, like uh, choices and they prefer what to do and they are in a position what i want okay they can easily uh, con or convince others with their own justifications they begin to focus thinking on emerging role in adult society okay so they are also playing a role and they are very much uh, uh, aware about that particular role that they are going to play in the society so these are the uh, things that we have to discuss and the cognitive development aspects any doubts are you listening Yes, sir. Following. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So the social development of adolescents. So that is our next uh, change. The social development of adolescents. Uh, we know that man is a social being. So we are existing in the world, in the society, uh, with uh, a magical bond that is the relationship. So without having a proper relationship, we cannot exist in the society and we are not a part of the society. So the relationship, based on that, we have to develop all the characteristics and we should be a social uh, being and we have to get socialized in our daily life. So in the social sphere, adolescents undergo a lot of changes in their interpersonal relationship and they also begin to understand the society and its diverse influences. So the dependence on parents not during childhood gets transformed into dependence on the friends and peers. So in the childhood, they are very much dependent to the parents. But in the adolescent period, we can see that they are dependent much more on the friends and the uh, peer groups. The adolescent also begin to acquire beliefs they are possessing their own beliefs, their own opinions. So they are creating, making their own attitudes and stereotypes about society based upon their own understanding. So as per their own understanding, uh, they are seeing the things and they are making changes in their own beliefs, opinions and attitudes. So what are the characteristics of adolescents' social development? The first one is the increased peer group influence. So in this period, I've already told you that so they are very much selective so they choose they select their peer as per their own interest so they see some qualities that should be attracted as per his way of thinking so here the adolescents spend most of their time with outside the home and with members of the peer group so peers have a greater influence on the attitudes their speeches their interests their appearances and their uh, behavior etc okay so being recognized as a popular member of a peer group it's an important for the adolescent that he should get that recognition the adolescents often get into argument with their parents and elders since they want to break away from their control 
okay so here they do not like the parents to control them a lot okay so we can they won't even give their ears for advisors they are not uh, what they don't want to be in the parents track and more than that they depend and they have their fidelity uh, on the uh, peer group and their friends the second characteristic is changes in social behavior so the attraction towards a member of the opposite sex is another prominent characteristics of adolescent attraction the opposite sex attraction the, this is natural and it is occurs uh, it occurs mainly because of the sexual maturity taking place among the adolescents so the social activities whether with the same sex or with the opposite reach its uh, peak in high school years and as a result of broader opportunities for social participation the social insight improves among the older adolescents the greater the social participation of adolescents the greater the social competency as their social skill and abilities develop so the uh, in, when they are mingling with the uh, selected people in the society their behavior is getting changed and they are becoming uh, possessing a lot of skills and abilities they're developing it uh, in this particular period so the new social groupings that is the third characteristics in social development of adolescents the new social groupings so there will be a gangs we can see that there will be gangs in the childhood so that will getting uh, break up uh, uh, in the future and in the interest in the organized group controlled by the adults also wanes so when they are in the childhood they don't want to uh, go out of the gang but here they like to be in the adolescent group they like to be a part of the group control of the group controlled by them okay they want to be a part of the group that group should be controlled by them not anyone they uh, they will not let anyone to control them in that particular group so there is the social groupings then the new values in selection of friends so they possess new values new regulations in selection of friends in adolescent period so they are no longer select their friends on the basis of the ready availability of a school or in the neighborhood as they did during the childhood so adolescent they want as friends those whose interest and values are similar to theirs okay so they understand them and make them feel secure they should make them comfort and whom they can confide problems and discuss matters they feel they cannot share with parents or others so sometimes the adolescent uh, feel that only a person uh, person who are having the same wave wavelength of him can help him only he can disclose the things with him so he won't be ready to uh, share the things with his parents or teachers because that is useless for them that is useless and nobody can help him in that way only the friends only according to his interest he selects the friends and the friend may be having the same wavelength or he will be feeling very much secure and he's having a lot of trust on that particular friend so they are creating a lot of values in selection of friends in this uh, development social development uh, stage then the next next characteristic is new values in selection of leaders okay uh, so they are also possessing a new values in selection of leaders so they want their leader with some superior abilities and skills so because uh, he or she is representing their group in the eyes of the society okay then the adolescent expect their leaders with certain qualities like attractive intelligent energetic uh, eager to do the things so enthusiasm that is most important uh, factor that influence in the selection of leaders here so the adolescent group uh, they are uh, pro they are uh, understanding the leaders in that way the person should be attractive the person should be intelligent the person should be energetic the person should be eager to do the things etc so the next characteristic is the influence of media influence of media that is nothing but uh, the media becomes a very powerful source it's a 
very powerful factor that make changes or that influences uh, the uh, the stage especially music and television now it is social media when we think of that the mobile phones uh, most of the adolescents they are addicted to the phones and uh, we uh, experiencing the same from our own families and from our surroundings people are fond of spending their much of the time with the uh, use of mobile phones and a lot of new disorders have been uh, found by the uh, american psychiatric association like selfitize you know what it is selfitize no sir can you please explain what is that self it is no sir i don't know. you do not know you haven't heard about that so that's no, a new disorder uh, found by the american psychiatric association in the current era that is the people who are fond of taking a lot of selfies so it has got three levels of that particular disorder that is mild moderate and severe again uh, the person will be taking a selfie and he is just looking at it the selfie and he is enjoying his beauty that is a one form that is a mild the second one is he will be taking four or five selfies and he is showing others and getting the uh, comments from others that should make him uh, satisfactory so that is the moderate and the severe that is he is taking a lot of selfies and he is posting it and he is getting the feedbacks and he is enjoying that so that is the moderate level so a lot of things screen addiction is there okay so influence of media that is another extent and the addiction that happens uh, to the use of social gadgets that's the the uh, electronic gadgets uh, in the name of uh, addressing and understanding the media is another extent so we can see a lot of addiction screen addiction so the digital consumption among the children especially in this adolescent age group is high so more more problems will be there uh, many psychologists many counselors they are warning the use of uh, mobile phones and other gadgets in the particular time period Uh, especially during covid everybody was everybody was uh, having the mobile phones and they are living in that mobile phone whether it's from uh, the age group of even 2 uh, or 3 till 65 to 70 because nothing could be done during that time okay everybody was uh, in a way we can tell that addicted to the use of mobile phones as well so it has got a bad impact in their behavior and character so the influence of media when we think of that uh, media becomes a very powerful source of influence in this stage especially music and television so this provides adolescents with uh, role models like film heroes they are having a tendency to imitate the hero that they uh, see and the great athletes will be the model of them Or, or even uh, some well attracted people in music will be their heroes whom they try to emulate themselves with the other one then so, such models help the adolescent realize their fantasies and dream so by seeing that person he is having an ambition or he is uh, getting into it and he wants to become that person so he consider him as a role model the superhero okay then the body conscious that is another characteristic in uh, social development of adolescents then the body image becomes very important concern for the adolescents they having an appropriate figure in fact is almost a teenage obsession so in addition fashion and glamour reflected in the style of dressing uh, sporting makeup having the right hairstyle etc become very important in their lives so they are very much conscious about in their dressing their appearance that they present before others so these are associated with the social roles that the adolescents want to develop and to experience with it so they are becoming more body conscious and they uh, want to get attracted with their presentation of their physique in this particular uh, period so we know that the dressing styles that is happening right fashion 
they are following the fashion the adulthood uh, adult uh, sorry adolescent people they are following the fashion the current trend they keep on changing they are updating their dress codes as per the uh, emerging trends okay then uh, we move on to the identity crisis among adolescents what is this the word identity crisis what is that identity any 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 idea identity crisis hello is there anyone could you please respond what do you yes, mean the term identity crisis no. it can be like a confusion about yeah. Uh, yeah. the real purpose of uh, yeah. life at this time so according to erickson so he tells that it is the to confront the chief task of adolescents is to confront the crisis of identity versus identity confusion that means or identity versus the role confusion. so that is to be dealt in this uh, identity crisis so as to become a unique adult with a coherent sense of self and a valued role in the society so i repeat so a adolescent has to become a unique adult with the coherent sense of self and a valued role in the society so identity means the it is the sense of the self okay it refers to the sense of the self so it is the answer of our quest for who i am okay so we used to ask a question who i am so the answer could be the self so that could be the answer that could be the identity that i am am i our values our beliefs etc who am i what is my value what are my values or what are my beliefs etc so all these things shows my identity and that is the quest to find what i am and how i am okay so identity is the sense of self it is the answer to our quest for who i am our values beliefs etc seeking an identity means locating one's place in the social setup so i am getting a my own place in the society that is my identity so uh, i am a social being when i should tell that i am a social being i have to have a place i have to have a role to be played in my society identity also refers to one's skills and attributes as a person so each person is unique so when we are giving a task to five people the five people are unique by their own nature by their own personality traits by their own characteristics they use their own methods to complete to accomplish that that task and in that way we can tell that they are unique so for example only one question paper will be given to a class of students for the examination if you observe that or one same question paper but the answers will be different from all these 30 or 50 students so that is the uniqueness okay so they have got their own skills their own capabilities and their own uh, proficiency their own attributes to do a thing so that's the identity and the adolescent period there is a rapid shift between self confidence and insecurity this there should be an identity confusion happens uh, to be a major characteristics of adolescents so the parents the teachers the members are expected to responsive to the needs of the adolescents and help them achieve their goals and aspirations that provide him or her meaningful identity so most of the adolescents uh come out of the identity crisis by the time of their adulthood some are disturbed and confused to have a lot of problems in the, uh, their early adult life the extent of adolescent crisis varies from society to society so in the traditional joint families in india if we closely examine a young adult can continue to be dependent on the family for a much longer period than it uh, than is noticed 
in the western societies so in western societies and uh, when we compare with the indian culture definitely there is a lot of discrepancies and differences so in india they will be uh, continuing for a long time but in the western much they are, uh, will not be assembled to the family for a long period of time and they will get separate and they will uh, start to find their own ways so as a result the western adolescents may actually have a shorter period of preparation to assume an independent adult or role compared to the indian youth when we compare to the indian youth so we may need a lot of time because we are part of the family and we have to play the family role and we have to stay with the fa family for a long time but in the western countries we can see that even after their schooling they start to have their own life so in any case the adolescence is a period of great upheaval and challenge of the young mind so of course we can tell that the adolescent reaches a stage of cognitive maturity by his or her ability to think hypothetically and uh, abstract ways so by the end of adolescence period the thinking becomes quite scientific and logical so during the end of this period they are thinking in a very uh, critical way so a lot of reflections will be coming out after their thinking so the adolescent can be very creative and innovative in their thinking and most of them engage in some creative activity at least temporarily so their thinking appears to be immature because they seem to unsure of themselves and their identity and also become uh, confusive and they are most likely than adults to engage in high risk or rash behavior so but in terms of their cognitive development adolescents quickly reach a level of thinking which differs a uh, little from adults so in the text we can see the table uh, in the table that includes <clears throat> the various physical cognitive and social and emotional changes taking place among the adolescents uh, during this adolescent period so 11 to 13 years what's happening among them 14 to 18 years what is happening to um, uh, them and uh, 19 to 21 years what's happening uh, what changes are happening physically cognitively and socially and emotionally as a development structure so all these things are given there please go and read it okay so that's about the identity crisis <clears throat> any doubts Hello. All good. All no, good. Sir. Any doubts? No, sir. No, sir. Okay. So now we move on to the profile of adolescents in India. Okay. The profile of adolescents in India. So adolescents comprise a sizable population in our country. Uh, there are. Um, as per the census of 2001, so there are 225 million adolescents comprising nearly one fifth of the lock total population. So there, the one fifth of the total population is adolescents, uh, and uh, we can see the specialities as the composition varies by age and sex. So of the total population, 12.1 percent belongs to the 10 to 14 age group and 9.7 percent are in the 15 to 19 age group the female adolescents comprises 46.9 percent and main male adolescents 53.1 percent of the total population as per the census 2001 the present adverse sex ratio in 0 to 6 years 90 to 7 girls for thousand boys so that was in 2001 do you know what would be the sex ratio at the moment at present in 2000 after or even 2020 anybody knows just google it it's uh, quite interesting so Thank <laughs> you. 
इस 943 फोर्टी थ्री अवर मेल ओवन वन थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी मेल is the class over not yet sir class is not over maybe there might be some issues i think some issues with the teacher अच्छी बात है सर ब्रेक चाहिए था पांच मिनट ब्रेक कर लेते तब तक सर का नेट भी चालू हो जाएगा हम्म क्लास में टीचर नहीं है और क्लास में इतनी शांति पांच मिनट ब्रेक ले लेते हैं सर थोड़ी सांस सूस ले लेते हैं चाय पी लेते हैं मुझे क्या था कि छोटे बच्चों से पता हल्ला मचाया जाए नेट चालू नहीं नहीं सांस तो सर को लेनी चाहिए नॉन स्टॉप वो बोल रहे थे हम सब तो चुप थे बिल्कुल सही मैम तब तक हम भी पांच मिनट चाय पी लेते हैं ओके ओके हम भी बड़े ध्यान से सुन रहे थे हमने भी चाय नहीं पी इस टाइम पे बिल्कुल सर सर क्योंकि बोल तो बहुत अच्छा है 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 कि कि मतलब मुझे तो बहुत सोच सोच के बड़ा देख के बड़ा देख आ गए सॉरी सॉरी आवर फेलियर दैट्स व्हाई नो यू डिजर्व ब्रेक आल्सो फॉर कंटिन्यूसली स्पीकिंग फॉर सो लॉन्ग थैंक यू Okay, so we were, talking next about, uh, we were talking about the sex ratio. So anybody knows the current sex ratio? How many males are there? Four thousand. Sorry, how many females are there? Four thousand males. Sir, I think the ratio is almost uh, equal. Not much mm-hmm. of a difference. It's almost the same. Not much of a difference. Yeah, but there was a. Uh, Survey that shows that um, in thousand sixty females per thousand males, something something on those sorts. I remember. In the as per the report of two thousand twenty-two, it could be. Nine forty-three, four thousand twenty, as per the NFHS five survey, the National Family Aid Survey. So it could be in two thousand eleven, it was like a nine forty-three, four thousand twenty, and uh, that was the fifth round of National Family Aid Survey. So here, to improve nine fifty-two, so that is the sex ratio should be. Expected to improve to 952 by 2036. So that's from 2000 in 2011 it was 943, but now it is increasing. I think so. They have uh, uh, stopped the sexual uh, what do you call the sexual identification during the pregnancy time and uh, 
the gender determination and also uh, the female infanticide after the sexual uh, gender uh, determination. So now the ratio is increasing. Okay. So we continue with what we were talking about the profile. What we're talking exactly? The profile of adolescents in India. So let me uh, share my screen. Okay, so we go, uh, so we carry on with our profile of adolescents in India. So the composition of varies, uh, composition varies by age and sex. And the uh, second one is the early marriage is common. So in the 50% of Indian women, so were married before they attained the age of 18 years as per the second round of National Family Health Survey. So while the average age at marriage for the educationally disadvantaged female is 15 years, for women who have completed uh, school, it is 22 years. It indicates that continuation of education results in delayed marriage. The female mortality rate, uh, they are higher than males okay that is the next point so a high risk of pregnancy and childbirth uh, results in a high level of female mortality in the reproductive age group the maternal mortality of uh, teenage mothers is a grave cause for concern then the adolescents from rural areas and girls are disadvantaged so the 25 percentage of the 15 to 19 years age group in rural areas and 10 percentage in urban areas are illiterate. Okay, the male female differences grow with each level of education. Uh, the rural girls are most disadvantaged. Enrollment figures in schools have improved, but gender disparities still persisting there. The challenge is to keep students in schools. Okay, so we know that the, in the um, existing nature or the existence of the government schools in almost all the remote villages. Uh, students are getting less and it is very difficult to sustain the number of the students, etc. It's a big challenge. So that shows the adolescents from rural areas are, and the girls are disadvantaged. Then the economic compulsion force many to work. So the economic compulsion, their poor economic stability, the economic background that uh, compel them to uh, send them forced to the work and nearly one out of three adolescents in 15 to 19 years is working 20.6 percent as main uh, workers and 11.7 percent as marginal workers as per the 2001 census so economic compulsions force adolescents to participate in the workforce despite adult employment employees like to engage children and the adolescents uh, because of their cheap labor. Then the next one is malnutrition affects development. So we know that more than half of the adolescent girls suffer from anemia, two thirds suffer from chronic energy deficiency of the third degree with body mass index below 16. Uh, married women aged 15 to 49 are also reported to have BMI below uh, 18.5. Iodine deficiency disorders can lead to a growth retardation and retard mental development. Then anemic adolescents, mothers are at higher risk of miscarriages, maternal mortality and giving birth to stillborn and uh, underweight babies. Then the other one, next point is drug abuse is emerging as a problem. So the challenges that we face among the adolescents is uh, quite frightening so the drug abuse is 
emerging as a problem a major section of drug users are below 20 years oh surprising then 40 percent of them started taking drugs uh, when they were between 15 to 20 years of age the social factors such as illiteracy economic background unemployment rural residents and family disharmony increase vulnerability to drug abuse so it's a pathetic situation that you face even now in the current uh, uh, world so many of them are drug addicts especially in this adolescent group a lot of people are fond of using uh, varieties of drugs okay you know that then the crimes against adolescents are prevalent it's a dangerous time and dangerous period in the human development uh, uh, stages the sexual abuse of both boys and girls cuts across economic and social classes According to a survey in 84 percentage cases, the victims knew the offenders and 32 percentage of the offenders were neighbors. Crimes against girls range from Eve teasing to abduction, rape, prostitution and violence to sexual harassment. Unfortunately, social taboos prevent these crimes from being registered even when registered prosecution rarely takes place that is also the speciality of our uh, judgment the our court right many of the things have not been prosecuted and uh, the people are uh, living in the uh, prisons in a uh, with five star even uh, uh, some extent of five star facilities and there are a lot of criminal lawyers are there to help the people who really did any sorts of uh, crimes. So only it happens in India, I think. Okay. Then unmet need for contraceptives. Unmet need for contraceptives. So the uh, knowledge of family planning that is very promoted, though it is promoted, but in the remote areas, villages, they still... Uh, unaware of the family planning techniques and all. The availability and use of contraceptives is not publicized. Even amongst currently married women, there is an unmet need of contraception being the highest in the age group of 15 to 19 years. Nearly 27% of adolescents have reported unmet need for contraception. And 19 of uh, TFR is uh, contributed by adolescent mothers in the age group of 15 to 19 years uh, that was given by the report was given by the national family health survey uh, one and two rounds then the next one is trafficking and prostitution are increased so the extreme poverty low status of women lacks border checks and the collision of law enforcement officials has led to increase in prostitution so the expansion of trafficking and uh, uh, clandestine movement of young girls has also increased across national and international borders. So if you go to Goa and Mumbai, we can uh, see in the shelter homes, many um, people were uh, brought by the rescue operators and uh, rescue workers and they are being rescued from such kind of illegal illicit trafficking so if we talk about we talk with them we will start to cry because a lot of bitter experiences we can hear from them and they're telling that that that's a less number of people and there are many to be rescued so that's why it is told here trafficking and prostitution are increased then primary Tell sexual relations are increasing. That is also very frightening. So most sexually active adolescents are in their late adolescence. Lack of contraceptives or condom use characteristics, the vast majority for sexual encounter among youth. So the incidences of unintended teenage pregnancies and abortions have shown a steady increase. Unsafe abortions are a major source of reproductive mortality and morbidity. So regarding this one, this particular issue, the premarital sex relations in this adolescence is uh, very common. We can uh, see the news in, through the social medias and even in the newspapers. So it's uh, 
very very frightening and uh, we think where our kids are i mean our children are okay so uh, the parents may not be aware of all the illegal things that is happening among the uh, their uh, daughters who are in the teenage so surprisingly we can tell that uh, maybe use of mobile phone it has got a uh, role impact and negative impact in uh, such kind of activities that has to be controlled and that has to be properly communicated okay so the misconceptions about hiv aids are widespread so there is a high level of awareness about hiv among young people especially among those who are more literate so uh, we know that uh, the current people the current adolescent people they are having idea about the uh, hiv and aids so there will be a lot of uh, misconceptions existing in the society uh, regarding this hiv and aids do you think that hiv and aids are same what's your idea about hiv and aids in the msw in a regular studies uh, of madras university course they have got a paper elective paper called working with, uh, with people living with hiv and aids what is the difference between hiv and aids please comment i can uh, uh, just give it a shot maybe um, hiv is a virus uh, yeah, absolutely uh, detected at a certain point of time then with proper medication with the art uh yeah. the life expectancy goes uh it can be increased and uh the further transmission yeah uh, you know, uh once get married and uh, there is possibility that with the medication and everything it won't uh, transfer to the kid and uh you know uh, you absolutely right about uh, the awareness thing because somehow you know I was associated with NIST and mm. uh, uh the aids uh hiv aids uh, awareness camp that's one of the most successful uh, programs that has yeah, been yeah. run by the government yeah. that's one of the most uh, uh, you know successful one so uh, we have uh, resonate in that mm -hmm. okay so there we have to understand that uh, the people with hiv all the people living with hiv will not be affected with aids because it's an viral disease like other viral disease but all the hiv carriers are not having aids that is the first uh, thing that we have to understand okay so aids it's a syndrome acquired immunodeficiency syndrome that affect our when the virus is affecting to our body uh, that totally uh, distracts our immunity power what gives our immunity what gives which cell cd which cell What white gives us cells. white blood cells? Hmm? White blood cells. Yeah, we call it as the CD4 count. Okay, so that if the CD4 count goes beyond two hundred, the person is having AIDS. The, the person is uh, getting AIDS. Till then, if he's having a good immunity power, the CD4 count is very high. He's just having HIV, but he's not having. aids that is the major uh, thing that we should know the major knowledge that we should acquire and to avoid the misconceptions about hiv and aids okay so uh you, if you read that uh, as per the 2001 survey we can see that negative attitude exists towards hiv positive individuals only 40.7 percentage of young people were willing to share food with the infected persons okay a large percentage of hiv infected persons are between 20 to 40 years and had contracted the virus early in life indicating the importance of educating during adolescence so we should have the possible knowledge about the hiv aids to avoid misconceptions and myths uh, existing in this particular area so there were a lot of discussions going on uh, this hiv uh, working with hiv aids people so whenever a student uh, in chennai uh, for my msw we used to 
work with work for these people there are a lot of organizations working for hiv aids people and we uh, during our internship field work practicum we were associated with them and we have done a lot of uh, projects activities for them and my research was also uh, in this area that is a uh, uh, everybody was concentrating uh, talking a lot for hiv so there are a lot of other viruses uh, called you know any other viruses like hiv what are the other viruses very dangerous viruses a lot of viruses are there no idea hep c so could be say hep c mm. So you know HIV or HCV is more dangerous. HIV that could be translate uh, transmitted only through the mode of transmission could be either unprotected sex or even the intra drug use users or even through the uh, unsafe uh, transplantation of the so with transfusion of the blood. But HCV, that is very dangerous than HIV. More, most of the people do not know that. Okay, so there are things to be uh, understood like this, and uh, but the manifestations and the vulnerability of HIV is high than the HCV, but it is more dangerous than its HIV. HCV is. Okay. Then that's about the profile of adolescents in India. Then we move on to the next uh, topic, that is emotional development. So we have completed the sexual and uh, cognitive and social. Now we move on to the emotional and behavioral development of the adolescents. Any doubts you have from so far explanations? No, sir. Nothing. Okay, so we move on to the next unit that is the emotional and behavioral development uh, during adolescence. So, adolescence, we can see that adolescents regulate their emotions because of their social expectations. Okay, so there is a connection. And during this stage, children begin to realize emotions are not simple as they thought when they were children. So when they were children, their emotions is uh, okay. But when they are transforming, transferring them or transformation is occurring from their childhood to the adolescent, what will happen? They're realizing that the emotions are not simple as they had in their childhood. So here, the each period of human development brings with new competency requirements. Okay, the challenges, the opportunities for personal growth. So, as an important traditional phase in the life course, adolescents present a host of new challenges. The emotional development of adolescents seems ever more complex in a changing and challenging world. So, what we have to know that the adolescent people, they should have the emotional maturity. Or emotional stability. Do you think that all the adolescents, uh, people, they're having the emotional stability or emotional maturity? Do you think that? Are they matured with their emotions? Yes. No, sir. Absolutely no. Absolutely no. Only few people. So they do not know what emotions, where, uh, what could be the ways to present or uh, reveal their emotions to other, to control their emotions. They do not know. Nobody has taught them. So this is out of the syllabus, no? So they are learning English, math, science, social sciences, etc., etc., etc. But they do not know how to control and how to regulate their emotions in the society according to their age. So emotional immaturity is very seen, very presentable in uh, with our children nowadays. So if you work in a school, with the teenagers or even the colleges, you can understand that the emotional instability or emotional immaturity you can see. Okay. Uh, 
we can think about the emotional development and the emotion we have to realize what emotion is emotion is nothing but it is the complex psycho physiological experience of an individual state of mind as interacting with internal and external influences so when a child in this age interact with the external influences he has got lot of experiences his mind could be experienced with but to the psychophysiological factors so when the it's an interaction so just as our behavior is the result of the interaction between my organism and the environment their psychophysiological experience is also uh, influenced with their uh, state of mind when they interact with the external influences or in other words we can tell that the emotion is a feeling or affect that occurs when a person is in the state or an interaction that is important to him or her especially to his or her well being okay so the important components of emotions are the affect the cognitive reaction the physiological reaction and the behavioral reaction so these are the three reactions that we had uh, when we think of uh, the emotions okay the affect the cognitive reaction the physiological reaction and behavioral reaction so there are a lot of number of classifications in the field of emotions and all those are having different views on the classifications so one other has given a classification as uh, there are eight primary emotions we have got eight primary emotions namely anger that could be an emotion then fear sadness disgust surprise curiosity acceptance and joy all these are the eight primary emotions of an individual okay so in everyday life we express our emotions with positive negative scale and in variable magnitudes uh, such as i feel quite well we tell that i feel quite well or even i feel well or i feel very well so the degrees that is with the statements uh, with a positive axis then in the other term we can tell that i feel quite bad i feel bad i feel very bad so the degrees in negative axis both these positive and negative axis shows uh, the way uh, uh, our emotions with a positive negative scale so according to the situation in which emotion is aroused we choose words such as love friendship fear etc so all these emotions are uh, transferred transmitted by the individual uh, at the same time show the emotional sign positive or negative and according to the intensity of the emotions we choose words like nothing quite some enough very so that shows the degrees the levels of the emotions that we have in this ways we compose the description of an emotion so we are describing our emotions with these words or the terms both the positive and negative levels and degrees so our emotions we are experiencing two components in a qualitative aspect of emotions and a quantitative aspect of emotions so it is better to understood uh, these with the table that is given in the uh text please do go through that then you will be able to understand the emotions as well so emotional development in adolescents and it has got lot of factors that influence and determine the development emotional development uh, in adolescents the first one is the first factor is the adjustment to the new environment so that's very important adjustment to the new environment the person is Uh, getting adjusted to the new environment that uh, the interaction that happens between the environment and the person his mindset that uh, shows the degrees of emotion that he reveals the second one is the social expectation of more mature behavior that is the second factor social expectation of more mature behavior that everybody expects uh, that being a social animal we have to show that uh, amount of uh, accuracy in our behavior and our uh, emotions so that has to be uh, considered as an expectation from the society how i should behave but 
that could be more or less imbalanced uh, when we think of the person to person. So unrealistic aspiration is there. So uh, that's also important unrealistic aspiration. So the people are not clear about their uh, goal or how they are being treated in the society, what things should be done to uh, accomplish their goals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, what should be done. So confusions will be there. The unrealistic aspiration is another factor. Then the school problems, a lot of problems may arise in school premises, in the school uh, life, then status insecurity, then unfavorable family relationships, and the obstacles to what adolescents want to do. So there may be a lot of obstacles in their choices. Okay, uh, we have already discussed their nature in the social and psychological and even sexual development time. And uh, there may be all these things can create the changes that happens in all these periods can create some obstacles to what the adolescents sh should do for their betterment. Then the risk of school failure, that is another factor in the expectations of teacher and the parents. So that's something uh, really noticeable and the parents and teachers having high expectations the adolescent may not be able to come up to the level of the ex expectations that the parent and the teachers have on them but uh, most of the time they are getting disappointed okay <laughs> and uh, they cannot be in the track of their expectations and the uh, expectations of the teachers and the parents then one question, one small question. relationships uh, with teachers and parents that's the other factor that influence the emotional development then conflict with parents uh, that's a usual thing about regarding the previous academic performances or the future educational plans there will be a lot of conflict with the parents that's also a uh, factor that influence the emotional development of adolescents okay uh, sir one small question uh, can you hear me? The, what are the characteristics of emotional development in adolescents so the sense of identity could be a characteristic so sense of identity which we have already discussed the about the knowledge of the self who am i or what i should need all those things are there the sense of identity so it involves establishing a realistic and a coherent sense of identity in the context of relating to others when i am comparing when i'm relating uh, myself with the other one i should have something unique to get pointed out and uh, the learning uh, others should learn something from me that could be the uh, ideal sense that I have to possess. The important characteristics of the emotional development of the adolescents are of the following. So in the sense of identity, we can self, uh, create self-esteem. That is something very important. Self-confidence, that's a part of the self. Uh, the values, the beliefs, the interest, everything is included, attributes included in our identity of the self. So we have already discussed about it. So we need to have a self portrait that means the self portrait uh, the identity that the adolescents possesses that is portrayed in the following areas like the desired career path the religious beliefs social and intimate relationship sexual and gender identity cultural or ethnic identity personality traits and the physical body image all those things are the part of our self portrait then uh, the the next uh, characteristic is the emotional swings that we have so we have already uh, heard that it's a period adolescence is a period of storm and stress uh, as a result of the constant changes uh, that the adolescents undergo there will be a lot of tensions confusions will be there the, they are a lot of emotional outbreaks will be there uh, emotional highs and emotional lows among the adolescents could be seen in this age the adolescents experiences some moodiness and may not be able to find the exact reasons for their moodiness and it is normal to be moody then the other one the next characteristics of self identity is the self esteem so self esteem 
it's uh, the confidentiality or it's the uh, uniqueness of a particular person uh, process. So it develops uniquely for each adolescent and there are many different uh, trajectories of self-esteem possible over the course of adolescence. The emotional status they are experiencing can strongly influence self-esteem either positively or negatively. Comments by others that influence them positively or negatively, the particularly parents and peers, they always make a lot of comments about uh, them that will also positively or negatively affect the uh, self-esteem level of a uh, particular uh, person. Then high self-esteem of the adolescents is the clear indicator of positive emotional development. So high self-esteem, that is the uh, clear indicator of positive emotional development where the emotional trauma will result in low self-esteem self among the adolescents. Uh, the following characteristics could tell or could help us to identify the different uh, uh, levels of self-esteem in adolescents, feeling depressed, then lacking energy, disliking one's appearance and rejecting compliments, then feeling insecure or inadequate, most of the time, having unrealistic uh, expectations of oneself, having serious doubts about the future, then being excessively shy and rarely expressing one's own point of view, then confronting to what others want and assuming uh, a submissive stance in most situations. So consistently, low self-esteem has been found to be associated with the negative outcomes such as depression, eating disorders, delinquency, and other adjustment problems. It is uh, important that professionals should focus on this area or even social workers should help them to identify the youth uh, who exhibit these characteristics and help them uh, to get extra help if they need to gain the adequate self-esteem. So without having a proper self-esteem, that means to a high self-esteem, the person cannot be productive. Okay. The emotional. Uh, sir, yes. Uh, one small question, if I. Yeah. Um, is emotion and feelings uh, same or is somewhat different? Yeah. So can you please repeat it? Emotions uh, and feelings. Is it the same thing or uh, different? Yeah, the emotions, as we know that it is uh, the primary thing that we possess, like our anger, our, uh, what do you call, the uh, love, sad, etc. These are the basic emotions that we have. When we think of the feeling, so that is, the feeling should be uh, communicated through emotions. So I feel sleepy means it's a, state of mind that I feel sleepy, I feel hungry. Okay, so it's a feeling. But emotion is something else. It's something more than that. Okay, I have to ex uh, explicit it. I have to express it. Our uh, emotions should be expressed. The feelings should be conveyed. Okay, when I love a person, I cannot, the emotion of love, I can hug them, I can kiss them. I have a feeling to love, I am expressing the feeling out of my love. That is emotion. All right. So, um, feeling. Uh, so the emotion comes first, or the feeling comes. First, you have the feel, then only to the emotion. Then you have the emotion, and then. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank. Thanks for the clarity. So it's it's a state of mind, but emotion should be the expression of what I feel. All right. Thank you. Okay, so the emotional intelligence or emotional uh, literacy, that is the last characteristics of emotional development in adolescence. Emotions exist as an essential part of human nature when we are cut away from them. So we lose fundamental aspects of our human capacities. So being emotionally literate means that you know what emotions you and others have. So that is emotional literacy, which means that I know what emotions I and others have, then how strong they are and what causes them, what are the causes of that particular emotion. 
all, all adolescents must begin to master the emotional skill necessary to manage stress and be sensitive and effective in relating to other people. So we should have these skills uh, and it is called as emotional intelligence. The skills that we use to uh, manage and uh, uh, control our emotions in an effective way with the other people is called as emotional intelligence. Daniel Goldman defined emotional intelligence as the capacity for recognizing our own feelings and those of others for motivating ourselves for managing emotions well ourselves and in our relationship. So it's the ability to control, manage our feelings. That is our emotional intelligence. So he outlines five main emotional intelligence constructs. First one is self-awareness. If uh, we are having the five uh, uh, intelligence, emotional intelligence constructs, we can have a good emotional intelligence. The first one is the first self-awareness. That is the ability to read one's emotions. And the second construct that involves controlling one's emotions and impulses and adapting to the changing circumstances. The third construct is self-motivation that involves emotional tenden tendencies uh, that guide or facilitate our reaching goals. The fourth construct, social awareness, that includes the ability to sense, understand, and react to others' emotions, others' emotions while comprehending social networks. Finally, the construct is the relationship management. Okay, the fifth construct that entails the ability to inspire, influence, and develop others while managing conflict. So if we closely observe and examine all these constructs, we can measure uh, the degrees of our emotion, whether we are having the emotional intelligence or whether we are having the emotional literacy, etc. So all these things will help us to have a clear-cut understanding of our emotions, the uh, revealing of our emotions, whether it's strong or less, uh, we will be able to understand by understanding the five constructs uh, given by the Goldman. Okay, so these are the characteristics of emotional development. And now we move on to uh, uh, the stages of emotional involvement, uh, sorry, emotional uh, development. So we have got uh, a gradual growth in all the spheres of adolescence. That is from uh, 12 to 14, 14 to 17 years, 17 to 19. The adolescents are showing some self-reliability and uh, independent decision making uh, in their uh, surroundings. And there are gradual growth in all spheres and these developmental stages includes the gradual growth aspect uh, the emotional aspect can be observed in the following spheres like independence so in independence in that sphere we can see the level of emotional development the emotions and affect to in our relationship in our physical appearance and body you know school work and career you know the sexual uh, affairs like the sexuality and romantic attachments, we can have the emotions, we can uh, uh, convey the emotions, we can assess the emotions as well. Then how to master our emotional development? There are a lot of skills required to master our emotional uh, development. We have to master our emotional development. First one is uh, the recognizing. The first skill that we need uh, to master our emotional development is recognizing and managing emotions. So in order to label their feelings accurately, adolescents must learn to pay conscious attention, attention to them. So we should be conscious enough to communicate our feelings or even our emotions. Without this self-awareness, I should know about myself and without having that proper awareness, it is uh, very difficult for me to tell any comments like or any uh, convey my feelings like good or bad okay or uptight etc so when adolescents are able to specify that they feel anxious about an upcoming test or sad about being rejected by a possible love interest then they have identified the source of their feelings which can lead to discovering options to resolve their problem 
so for example we can tell that they can set aside time to study or ask for help in preparing for the test uh, or they can talk over their feelings about being rejected by a love interest with a friend or think about a new person in whom become uh, interested so all this important point uh, is that being aware of and being able to label their feelings so that's very important being aware and being able to label their feelings help adolescents to identify what emotion he or she has and the options also they could identify to do something constructive about them okay so that's the next one is developing empathy the second skill that we require to manage to master the emotional development is developing empathy so what is empathy you might have heard that empathy so it's one of the major skill or tool that we need in social case work practice as well in social work practice empathy is very important advanced accurate empathy what is empathy uh, empathize that mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah please rohit yeah yeah please rohit move on what is empathy so how can you develop empathy empathizing would be making the other person feel you know uh, that you're in that person's state or when you're in a conversation so talking yeah, yeah. about the concerns related to that person uh, yeah. what i understand as meaning is uh, empathizing okay. Okay, very being good. in other person's shoes, oh, you can talk yeah, exactly, exactly. So that yeah, is yeah. the most definition given to empathy. The term empathy, advanced, accurate empathy, has to be practiced. So we are thinking for them by standing their own place. That means we are thinking for them. We are understanding the problems from their own side. So that's empathy. So. instead of showing sympathy we have to develop empathy to manage to master our emotional development uh, recognizing their own emotions lays the groundwork but does not ensure that youth will recognize that others are feeling so we have to recognize that the other will the other person will be also having the feeling okay so we have to understand in that way so empathy can be taught in various contexts Uh, helping students to empathize with the different groups of immigrants and understand the emotionally and uh, the negative consequences of prejudice etc okay so the empathy can give taraf proper understanding about the problem and clear clarity in their emotions okay in the sense that so when we think in the context of emotional development so empathy can help one to understand the clarity or the understand the emotions in a clear way so the next characteristic is learning to resolve conflict constructively so there will be conflict absolutely there will be conflict so how to uh, resolve that particular conflict we have to make it in a constructive way that is we need to learn how to resolve a conflict constructively so there will be a lot of tools for managing conflict that has to be modeled and that has to be uh, discussed among the uh, adolescents then uh, conflicts resolution programs should be taught to the students to define their objectives in their conflicts their feelings and the reasons for what they want and feel so the conflict first happens with the self the self conflict that is related to their self identity what or oh, he is or what she is what they want and what they do not want so first they have to practice to have a clear self image the self portrayal then to uh, as per the self esteem and their capabilities they can uh, find their own ways or skills to resolve uh, their conflict with others as well But that is in a constructive way A lot of programs are there that has to be uh, uh, given as a training for the adolescents to equip with them. then developing a cooperative spirit that is also important cooperative spirit we know that uh, it is hardly surprising that schools 
mirror the competitive attitudes present in our larger society school is the dais or the place where we can see a lot of competitive attitudes yet in the contemporary work world that importance of teams and the ability to work cooperatively with others is increasingly emphasized so we are living in a world of challenges just as that we are living in a world of competition highly competitive people are around us especially in a school time we can see that and we can experience that so it requires students to rely upon one another to learn a subject using strategies that reduce competition and that elevate the standing of students who are sometimes ignored or ridiculed so there are some people students will be ridiculed or ignored due to some situations or their conditions that has to be avoided there could be proper strategy should be maintained form and maintained for uh, uh, making them to have a better uh, academic track records and academic performances so this approach has been successful not only in helping adolescents to learn how to work cooperatively towards the group goal so there should be a cooperative spirit that means each and every one should attain the goal uh, by this attaining this cooperative spirit i am widening my thoughts i am uh, uh, what do you call showcasing my talents for the betterment of others i am getting many good things from the other uh, members in that particular group so it's a ways and means to grow in a productive way developing a cooperative spirit means that it will help us me to uh, grow in a qualitative way by mingling and discussing with the other people okay these are the uh, ways to master our emotional development then behavioral development uh do you have any doubts if we start it we won't be able to finish in the time given so do you have any doubts no sir everything no, is sir. clear so let me just uh, tell something about the behavioral development so behavioral development it is uh, all of the ways of adolescence Devel adolescents develop cognitively, physically, socially, emotionally, prepare them to experiment with the new behaviors. Uh, they transit from childhood to the adolescent. So there is a transition that happens from childhood to the adolescent, just as that their behavioral uh, is also getting developed. The experimentation in turn helps them to fine tune their development in uh, uh, other realms, risk taking. In adolescence is an important way that the adolescents shape their identities. So this is that their behavioral development is very important, and uh, uh, there are a lot of stages. Uh, especially three stages are there uh, in their behavioral development. First one is identity versus role confusion. What does it mean? Identity versus role confusion. So during this stage. uh behavioral development in adolescents develop a desire for independence so they are having getting an independent nature uh from parents or caregivers as they achieve physical maturity so in the adolescent period we know that they are attaining the physical maturity just is that they need independence from their parents or other caregivers to uh uh go ahead with their activities during this phase the adolescents face uh the question of who am i they feel inherently insecure about themselves and become highly dependent upon the peer group than the parents and teachers or even the supporters so they need support from the peer groups uh, they want to have that uh, peer pressure okay then second stage is becoming autonomous the different from the early stages of development the adolescents show increased independent functioning and moving very fast to the stage of adults so they also show increased self reliance in their own activities autonomous means so they are self oriented people self uh, guiding people so they are becoming autonomous self and uh, autonomous college we know that okay so the swayam bharanam that means self control should be there uh so the nature is like that that adolescents may fight with the parents or society in large regarding the rules and limits surrounding and entering their autonomy the ability to control okay then sense of 
invincibility that is the third stage of behavioral development the adolescent stated to believe that they are incapable of being conquered or overcome or subdued this behavior is seen more in high risk group the newly enhanced physical and cognitive abilities combined with increased independence make teenager feel very powerful so they have got a impression that they are very powerful because they are independent they are having a good self image they are physically matured so all these things should show that they are very powerful the sense of this invincibility that may result in risky behaviors so it definitely that make them to have a lot of challenges through the risky behaviors in the form of risky behaviors because they feel as uh, though consequences will not apply for them so they are not bothering about the consequences first they will act then only they will think of the consequences in this particular age group so that's also the stage of development so we can have a lot of risk behavior we can see a lot of risk behaviors like drug and drug substance abuse stress and depression bullying or ragging school problems unwanted pregnancy and stds and even delinquency all these are the uh, risk behavior that is seen in the uh, adolescents during their behavioral development with the challenges sir. sorry excuse me sir i have a question yeah so just as we discussed right now that uh, in the stage of adolescence uh, the uh, adolescents may have a feeling of like uh, uh, it's invincibility so how to differentiate between the sense of invincibility and arrogance arrogance how to differentiate whether they are you know in the feeling of you know feeling like they are very powerful or whether they are behaving from the Uh, perspective of arrogance how to differentiate between this? yeah so in by nature they are having an image of uh, powerfulness actually it won't be there but they are assuming that they are okay that's okay. the power that they have it's not exactly there the okay. situations that they uh, undergo the, that they confront shows that but it is not exactly there but that shows the arrogance okay okay so the they are just living in their own convictions and their own uh, arguments or their own values so that's why we were talking from morning till now so they have got their own self identity uh, realization of the self so they want everything to uh, be uh, in a way that they prefer in a way that they assume but it is not the right thing no yeah so as the result the sense of invincibility and also the aggression or the even the arrogance that happens okay out of pressure they because uh, they think that mm, why can't they smoke why can't they uh, wander uh, with their friends the parents tell that you are not supposed to do okay so out of this imaginary or even the assumptions they are acting they the reflexes uh, it will be there and that can contribute a lot of uh, risk behaviors like the drug substance abuse stress depression ragging so all these anti social uh, characters are presentable there okay so we will discuss the challenges during adolescence in the next class so if you have got any doubts you can ask me right now any doubts any doubts no sir everything is clear you know to I, get I, I... Yeah, I, yeah. i hope we'll be studying about all these things also just like we we discussed uh, like at, during adolescence they have a kind of self perception and they are in their own world which is obviously at some points is not right so how to deal with all these things it's a, it's very strange and it's very challenging to deal with the adolescence 
Uh, what's your age? Sir. If uh, don't mistake me, if you are okay, tell me what's your sir, age. Sir, I have I have an adolescent son actually of fifteen years. Oh my years. God! Then you are yeah. witnessing it. You are experiencing <laughs> yeah. it. Yes, so yes, yes. That's why I'm. It's uh, just we can tell that, and uh, we can compare an adolescent uh, being with a bomb. Actually, <laughs> at any time true. it will get explode. <laughs> okay, because we have to make them in the right sense. That's why we are learning all these things. So it's yes. our duty and responsibility to understand, to make the person in a uh, effective or even a qualitative, productive man in the world. We are. actually we are offering that person's productiveness by realizing understanding all these things so that's our commitment so as a father as a social worker as a teacher as a brother that's my commitment so here what you have asked is absolutely mm, strange because in the sense that uh, we are struggling with them it's very difficult make them them to understand the things it's very really difficult because they see they perceive things as their own way so they will not go out of their comfort zone we they have to understand that they means we have to yeah so means we have to understand them or we have to come on their uh, you know the the ways they are doing and then trying to comprehend with the things what they are doing yeah unless and until they realize the effects of what they have done whether it's positive or negative it's very difficult to make them aware of the things sir so, i'm uh, sorry to jump in between uh, you know even uh, um, i got a 17 year old and um, you know what what i uh, put, that that's my personal uh, thing that because you know uh, i think every kid has to uh, you know go through the experience itself right I, you know if i have a, a point of view on something and my son has a point of view on something and he yeah. is adamant uh, enough to go his way and you know with his thought process so uh, what i do is i say fine you know what uh, go ahead experience it maybe you're right and i'm wrong so uh, uh, if he goes through it it's right great if not he'll get to know that you know all right you know this is not the right thing so maybe you know uh, what the other members are saying uh, i should try that so i personally feel uh, no matter how much uh, you know we we do we talk or whatever they have to do the experience on their own and uh, at this point of time it's just awareness that we can uh, we can we can provide them i totally force, agree i agree with this yeah i agree with this but then at the same time as parents i guess we need to have lot of courage for all this i mean to make them go on and have their free hand no, it's, you know, it, 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 it's let, all let about balance sure. uh, what we have to do is we have to make and we have to realize them to uh, prioritize the things that's very yeah. important that's, okay. that's very important okay. yeah. that's very important so we have to make them clear what is their priority that we can do yeah, we need to basically we need to balance our thing yeah. and uh, we have to we, make them yeah, to we, clear about what they have to do for the next day or the next moment of their next period of their life if they are convinced with that with uh, enough uh, evidences they will be going beyond that uh, usually we the, the, uh, the doctor parent will assume that the child should be a doctor so in that case that, we that's the worst understand. thing you can do. that's yeah, yeah. the worst thing that, that, that should not be there <laughs> we will not do that okay so that's we, we should not impose our interest on him so we have yeah. to realize his interest if it's in the right way definitely we have to uh, encourage him motivate him to prioritize the things absent absent yeah 